Hi, everybody. So I made you a classroom in my house. It's really cool. I know. Okay. Anyway, we're going to look at trig. That's and trig is really heavy, but we're going to take it super slow. And if you have questions, just make sure you come and meet me online or you can ask me questions in Google Classroom or through email. And then if we need to set up more office hour times, I can do that as well. Okay. Sound good? Cool. Um, this is an example of what I want you to do for your problem set uh, assignment number in assignment number six. Okay. So I'm giving you a bunch of words. One of them is radian. And you're going to go ahead and define the word. So a radian is a measure, a unit of measure that is equal to the radius of a circle. And radians are measured, um, it's the arc length of the circle. And so instead of using like the inside degree measurement, wow, that was really laggy. Um, what you're doing is if you think about your circle being a pizza, a radian is the arc length of your pizza pie, your slice of pizza, okay? Degrees would be the pointy part of your pizza. All right, so this example is super extra, but this is probably the hardest one for you to, to, def to have defined. So um, radian is basically the arc length of a circle, of a piece of a circle, and in radius, we're going to say the length of the radius is equal to one radian. So if you have a very small circle, this is still one radius is equal to one radian. It's like an auto adjusting um, unit. So I'm going to take this length right here. I'm going to estimate a little bit so that the length of one radius, if I wrap it around the circle, this is equal to one radian. So it's the equal lengths here, one radius, one radius. So how many of these radii fit around the circle? Well, two pi or 6.28 radians. Okay, that's it. So the circumference. So I'm going to have like one radian plus another radian plus another radian plus another radian plus another. I'm off a little bit. Plus another. And then you'll have a leftover like 0.28 radians. So six radiuses plus 0.28 fit around the circumference of every circle. So if I were to wrap this one, see, so this length is about that long. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus a little bit. So every circle has 6.2 radiuses able to wrap around it. Crazy, huh? Yeah, I know. Okay, next up. Just a little trig review. You, you all remember sine, cosine, and tangent? Yeah, from Mr. Ray's class? Yeah, yeah. So this is SOKATOA. So, ka toa And it's sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it depends all these trig ratios depend on where you're standing. So I'm going to take the cosine of A. So I'm going to stand at angle A. And I, since I'm doing the cosine, I need my adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the, the adjacent is next to me, but not the hypotenuse. So 34, let's see, it looks, looks like 34 is going to be my hypotenuse. And the side, the leg next to me would be 30. Okay. Opposite would be 16, across, across from me. So in angle A, this is my hypotenuse, my adjacent, 
and my opposite. So 30 is the length of my adjacent, and the hypotenuse is 34. Same angle, sine A, but this time we're doing the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 16 over 34, it's opposite me, okay? Um, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the, two, the ratio of the two side lengths, so 16 over 30. All right, and then each of those can be simplified, but I'm gonna let you do that. All right, depend. Now we're going to stand in angle C. Angle C. Okay, so each one of these side lengths is going to change. So the hypotenuse stays the hypotenuse in, in relation to where I'm standing in angle C. The 16, the length CB, 16, becomes my adjacent. And 30 is now my opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these in. opposite hypotenuse and opposite adjacent. Okay, so starting with tangent, we have 30 over 16, so the ratio flips, and you can simplify that. Then sine C would be opposite, which is 30, over the hypotenuse, which is 34. And then the side length at side C, that is adjacent, is 16 over 34. And again, I think you guys can simplify those on your own. Last thing to review today is special right triangles and what we're actually going to derive them. So these are the rules for special right triangles. You may have uh, memorized them at some point, but here's how uh, here's how these rules exist. All right, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is a 30 degrees up here, a 60 degrees and a 90. I am going to draw another 30, 60, 90 triangle. 60 degrees, 90 degrees. So the total degrees up here would be 60. So this is an equilateral triangle, yeah. So the length on this side over here is 2x because this one is also 2x. And that means that each one, if I split up the lengths here, this would be x plus x, which is, you know, 2x, right? Okay, so how do I get the height of my triangle here? Well, I just use Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And in this case, c squared is equal to 2x squared. And then we'll call a x squared plus the height, which is b squared. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract x squared to the other side. So I get b squared is equal to um, 4x squared minus x squared. So b squared is equal to 3x squared. And then square root. And we get b is equal to root 3 times the square root of x squared, which is just x. Or x square root three. So the height, the length of the height would be x root three. So we have 30, 60, 90 triangle rules. Across from 90, we use the rule of 2x. Across from 60 would be x square root three. And across from 30 is x. We're going to use that later. So don't forget write it down. Okay, 45, 45, 90. How do we get the rules for a 45, 45, 90 triangle? Well, if we start with the side length across from 45 as x, this angle over here is also 45 because it's an isosceles triangle. So this guy is also going to be x. So how do I find the third length of a right triangle? Again, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the two legs, I have x, got to square that value, plus x is equal to c squared. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared is equal to c squared. Go ahead and take the square root of both sides, and I get c is, let's say the square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 2 be root 2. So the side length here is x 
square root 2. So again, we're going to do the, rule, the angle of measures, 45, 45, and 90. And the rules are across from 45 is x, across from the other 45 is x, and across from 90 is x root 2. Do you have to derive them every time? No, you can memorize them. That's okay, but I want you to know where it comes from. All right, next part. So we need to find this, the lengths of each one of the sides. So I'm going to start with my little table here. And I can see across from 90 is the, the length root 2, sorry, 2 root 2. So I need to find the length across from 45. And I can, so what I do is I set it up in the table and then I create an equation x root 2 is equal to 2 root 2. Go ahead and divide by 2. Root 2, sorry. That equals 1. Root 2 divided by root 2 is 1. So x is equal to 2. Can you just, if you can just look at this and see that, okay, 2 is equal to x, then you're fine too. This is, this is the long way. Okay, so I can see that the side lengths are 2 and 2. Cool? Next one. All right. So I set up my table again, and this time I see that across from 45 is 4 root 2. And since it's going to be symmetrical there, I'm going to go ahead and put 4 root 2. And then I need to figure out what the side length is at, across from 90. So I think I need to figure out what x is. I'm going to take these two. x is equal to 4 times the square root of 2, right? And then and set them equal to each other. So that's the side length. This is the leg. So then I can go ahead and for the hypotenuse, I can say x times the square root of 2 is equal to the hypotenuse. So and from my earlier calculation, I know that 4 root 2 is equal to x. So 4 root 2 times root 2 is equal to the hypotenuse. Root 2 times root 2 is just 2. So the hypotenuse is equal to 8. Okay, plus 8. All right. Next up, we have the 20 is across from 45. So x is equal to 20. So x root 2 is equal to the hypotenuse. So 20 times root 2. Again, this is the long way. If you can just see this, that root 2 and at 20 is equal to x, and you just plug it in, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, this time we're going to change triangles, so 30, 60, 90 this time. So across from 90 is the length 4. So I'm going to start 2x is equal to 4 divide by 2. So x is equal to 2. So take that, and I now know the length across from 30 is 2. So how do I find the length across from 60 is equal to x root 3, so 2 square root 3. Last one, I believe. Okay, so across... 8 root 3 is across from 60, so 8 times the square root of 3. So looking at this setup, I can see 8 is equal to x. So then across from, so across from 30 would be a length of 8. And then the hypotenuse is double or twice as long as the side across from 30, so that would be 16. And we're done. 
If you have questions, again, feel free to contact me. I'm here. If you saw the top of my head a lot because I was looking at my iPod, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. I hope you have a great Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'll see you guys later.